Hello, hello to you, my fellow printer dweebs. You're very welcome to another episode of Community News from 3D Jake. All the news from the community and what's going on with us too. I'm joining you from the 3D Jake office in the center of Graz in southern Austria, a country whose economy is mostly pumpkin-based. Here's what's going on in 3D printing right now. First up, as usual, what is new in the shop? And we recently had our Matte Easy PHG newly added and is in stock right now. I'll be doing some videos showing this off in the near future, maybe even making a new blaster. It has very similar properties to our standard Easy PHG, a bit more rigid and heat resistance is just a few degrees less, but it is a matte PHG. So if you want something on the stronger side with less apparent layer lines, this is the stuff. Okay, first thing I wanna talk about is this. This is Joshua Bird's open source non-planar slicer for their four axis printer they built a few months ago. So whereas a lot of non-planar slicers were limited in terms of what models they could slice or maybe they had to be used with more complicated programs, this one preps the model itself to deform it so it is suitable for the printer. Then you can import it into Cura to get a toolpath and then de-deform it and then it is ready. The slicer is based on work done by a team at University of Manchester and everything that you need to get started is up on GitHub already, including of course the files necessary to build the 4-axis printer, which is a RepRap firmware based. Looks like things are accelerating with 4 x and non-planar 3D printing. A lot of this work is being done solely on RepRap firmware. So what do you guys think? Is this the future? Are we going to see lots more printers based on 4-axis and non-planar with near isotropic part strength? Should we stock duet boards now? Maybe. Let us know. In more non-planar news that is slightly more accessible to the average user, Tentech has released a script for Prusa Orca and Bamboo Slicers that introduces an element of non-planar slicing to normal run-of-the-mill slicers and printers without any hardware modifications. So what's happening here is that the sections of the print, like the walls or the infill, are given a sine wave shape that alternates between layers, allowing for less breaking points and, well, stronger prints. This is a similar method to a brick layering, which got some traction a few months ago, and with it, the parameters of the wave, like the frequency and the amplitude, can be changed as needed. This is a really interesting method, and I'm really looking forward to trying it out myself. Next up is... Hmm, tariff news. So as we probably all know, there now exists pretty steep tariffs uh, between the US and pretty much the rest of the world. And so for our stateside friends, this means a steep increase in the cost of printers, especially those coming from uh, China, where uh, pretty much all 3D printers are, are made, of course, which is, which is crap. Elegoo just a few days ago released a statement on the likely change in their US pricing to reflect the change in trade regulations, and this will probably be the same for other Chinese-based companies. This is obviously news that gets worse for more expensive printers, so this is not good news for the H2D. Maybe this will spur companies into manufacturing in the US, like Prusa's partnership with Printed Solid, or maybe it just won't and cheap printers are dead in the US. Well, you can get US manufactured printers, of course, like Volsbot. These are generally considerably costlier and there is a greater focus on a long lasting device. Or maybe this will spur a greater interest in community builds in the US. We just gotta wait and see. These are interesting and terrifying times. In other news, Rapid TCT was going on in Detroit a few weeks ago, and I saw some great coverage from 3D printing nerd Sam Prentice, uh, Taylor of Canuck Creator, and Nathan Bills Robots. Sam actually had some sample prints of the soon-to-be kickstarted Flashforge CJ270, uh, which is a full-color printer and starting at just over $3,000, which looks lovely, and I'm very excited to see it. There was also RevoPoint's new scanner, the Trackit scanner, which is a scanner that scans itself while it's scanning to improve scanning. Scanning, which is also going up on Kickstarter. So the fact that it scans itself, it actually tracks the reflective markers on the scanner, uh, means that it always knows its position. So you don't necessarily need to have to put those stickers on the model itself. Stickers can be irritating. The software generally does this automatically or removes the sticker, um, but sometimes there are artifacts, which means you need to load it up in CAD and smooth it out, and it's just irritating. And when you're trying to use like a matting spray, sometimes the stickers just don't adhere to the spray and they'll fall off. It's, it's infuriating. Creality are also releasing their new resin printer, the Halot X1, also on Kickstarter. Uh, they're actually doing this via their sister company, which is called Peocreate. We also saw their new K2 and K2 
Pro printers. Now, the K2 is going to be a little bit bigger than the K1, actually, uh, at 260 by 260. And the K2 Pro is K1 Max size, but with all of the special things that came with the K2 Plus. There is also Elegoo's new big Jupiter 2 printer. So, first of all, it's big. Has a build volume of 302 by 162 by 300, a 16K LCD screen at a pixel size of 20 by 26 microns. Beyond that, it looks a lot easier to use. So the doors open outwards and have this kind of wardrobe style handle. Uh, so if you have like resiny gloves on you, it's not that much of a bother to open it without getting resin on the actual door. Uh, the build platform also has these big handles make it easier to remove. And what is interesting is that the LCD can apparently be replaced in just about 10 minutes. That's cool. There is also an automatic resin removal, uh, which is great because if you're like me, you just kind of leave the resin in there for days, which, which is not advised. Don't do that. In more community news, Taylor from Canuck Creator also saw Luke's Laboratories new Pika hotend for Bamboo Lab printers. This is the same creator of the tube hot end, and this hot end gives a volumetric flow of 40 millimeters cube per second, but it does this while also keeping the original heater from the printers. A lot of this improvement is based on an increased melt zone, which is normal, but it's interesting because the hot end itself is, is very compact, and the melt zone actually extends into the volume of the heatsink, yet it is isolated from the heatsink. The only contact the hot zone has with the heatsink is with these little titanium wings, which are quite thin and have pretty low thermal conductivity, they're, they're titanium. They also use the fin nozzle from Slice Engineering, which has a much smaller wall, allowing for better heat transfer to the filament. The Pika hot end is also going to be released on Kickstarter. A small company using Kickstarter, is that what Kickstarter was intended for? There was also Automat 3D. They're making a build plate swapper that you can use basically with any printer. And it is expandable, so you can extend the rack for multiple printers. This is great for print farms and basically anyone who needs zero downtime on their printers. Uh, this is similar to the swap mod that we have in the shop, but way more inclusive because it's not just limited to one printer. Taylor also saw the iBoss dryer, which rotates the spool as it dries, and they also have an AMS mod that expands it with a filament dryer in individual chambers for each spool that will automatically seal the chamber's vents after drying when the chamber's humidity is at the appropriate level to keep it isolated from humidity in the air. All right, that about does it for this month. As always, links to all of the stories and videos are down below in the description. Check them out. Let us know what you think. And if you didn't know, we also have a Discord server where there is talk about 3D printing on a daily basis. Our next video will come out next week. So until then, happy printing, and we'll see you then. Later. <laughs>